What is up guys, this is Joe with Optics, and today we're talking about the Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind DLC. Now before we get into it, just my thoughts on Kingdom Hearts 3 as a whole. I really enjoyed it. While it wasn't perfect, it was still a lot of fun, and I loved everything it did with the story for the most part. So I was really looking forward to this, and curious what they were going to do with this. And I gotta say, they did not disappoint. Now, for this one I'm not going to go too much into spoilers, but if it was in the trailer, then that's something I'm going to talk about. So if you haven't seen the trailers and you want to go in blind, I'll give a slight spoiler warning whenever I'm about to say something about it. But for the most part, they fixed all the issues that people had with the base game for Kingdom Hearts 3. And I know a lot of people also say that this DLC stuff should have been in the base game, but I look at it as a final mix. This, all the games, base games were solid games, but once you got the final mix to it, it made it get the game so much better. Now, we're going to do things a little differently today. Instead of ranting and raving right about, we're going to go into a little bit of negatives that we did have with this. Me, personally, I didn't have negatives, but looking at it from other people's viewpoints, I can see some things that people might not exactly like. And that being for the Remind DLC portion of it, it wasn't exactly that complicated. Like, I played it and I think I almost died a couple of times, but I'm pretty sure I went through the whole Remind section of the DLC without dying. So people who complain about it being easy, in the Remind DLC section of it, it's still not too, still not too complicated. The other thing I can see people having an issue with is it did get almost repetitive. Because the way the story goes without going into details, you are playing, replaying a lot of the Keyblade Graveyard stuff. And while it's very awesome because you can play with different characters, it did get to a couple points where it did almost feel like it was being repetitive. But thankfully it does expand upon things and have different views and go in different directions sometimes that it didn't take away from the game. For me, when I started feeling like it was about to be really repetitive is when most of the repetition stopped and then it just got insane. So those were the two major things we had. I mean, that's really all I could figure out from this stuff. Overall, it was a blast and it did make the game even better. I already loved the game and I still can't decide whether or not it is one of my favorite Kingdom Hearts. And this DLC just further enhanced that struggle because now I really don't know if it is my favorite or not because it was just so much fun and the story got so much more interesting and just the way they did things in general it was just fantastic like i mentioned before they really listened to the fans on this one which they didn't really have to if you think about it they could have just kept doing the dlc and added small things and just kept doing the way they wanted but they really did a lot of stuff to please the fans with adding explorable scala which a lot of people were dying to have that i mean I was a little disappointed, but for me, it wasn't the end of the world. But now that I had it, I'm just thrilled with that place. That place was beautiful to look at. And then to be able to run around and find all these other hidden areas and all these other beautiful locations inside this massive area, it was fantastic. And like I said, this is stuff that was seen in the trailer, the Scala, and then the other thing that added was seeing some Final Fantasy characters. And also in the trailers, you saw other characters that you could play as. All of that was enjoyable. And I did not expect them to add that in, and it was stuff that, honestly, I didn't really care if they added it or not. But now that I have other playable characters, especially for that Keyblade Graveyard spot, and the characters that you can play as, was amazing. And I just loved it so much. And the way they implemented the Final Fantasy characters was pretty cool. Because, to me, it wasn't a huge deal. Yes, Final Fantasy is part of Kingdom Hearts, but I didn't really see a way for them to add into it, had them into it without kind of taking away from the story a little bit but they did it in this and the way they did it was perfect now the story stuff they added and the in-depth characters things they add was just great numerous times i was just in awe there was a boss battle where i actually almost died because i got too distracted with what was happening that i forgot to actually continue fighting and there was numerous times where ashley was spazzing or crying and she loved this probably more than i did she had a ball with this now after the remind stuff you get with the the limit cut stuff and that is the data battles to fight the organizations and secret boss and stuff like that and usually i'm gonna be honest with you guys i never really did those before i mean i see why people like it i'm more so here for the story so for me it's not a huge deal if we have like hard final bosses secret bosses and stuff like that but i tried these guys and they are not easy by any means I mean, I don't have the ultimate weapon yet, and I 
I don't think I'm that high of a level. I mean, I'm around 50s. So I plan on going back, getting the ultimate weapon, all that, and trying again later, which is something that usually doesn't happen for me, but something about it just pulled me in and I really want to try beating these guys, which is awesome. Now they added two data things. The first one is the boss battles, like I mentioned, and then the other is, I believe it's called data greetings. And that is just, man, Square just gave too much power to the players there. They gave us a meme machine. I've seen people already making memes, but I've also seen people remaking wonderful, like iconic moments from this series. And that is what I love about it. I mean, I spent a couple, probably like an hour or two playing around with it, seeing how this thing worked. And I had a blast with it. And I can see myself and numerous other people sinking hours just into data greeting stuff alone, not even anything else. So overall, we loved it, and that's honestly what we were expecting. We love any and everything Kingdom Hearts, and this was fantastic. I know some people have been debating whether or not it's worth the price point. For me, it definitely was, because like I said, this is essentially basically the final mix version of it. And I'd rather pay 30 to 40 for the final mix than buying a separate game. Which, don't get me wrong, if they release final mix, I'll probably buy that too. But I had no issue paying the DLC because you got a lot of stuff and it incentivized you to play the game even more. And it also, like I said, it's like the final mix. You get a lot more cutscenes at it. You get a lot more of the story at it and an insane amount of gameplay that can take you a lot of hours to get through. So we love this DLC and we can't wait to see what comes next in this series. But we want to hear from you guys. Let us know down below on the comments or on Instagram or Twitter what you guys thought of the DLC. And with that, we'll leave you guys with the two pictures we made from the data greeting section.